But before you sit, please just welcome your neighbor to church this morning. Say to your neighbor, welcome to the second half of the year. It's good to see your faces. I mean your face again, neighbor. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I woke up with a song in my heart this morning. Um, it's a Yoruba song. Uh, well, before, even though it's... Um, a song that I know many people may not be familiar with. Uh, maybe for those of us who grew up in the local churches will remember. But I just heard it in my spirit as though angels were singing it in my ears this morning as I woke up. It says, Ide mija, hallelujah, odele ayo. Ide mija, hallelujah, I thought we had the um, only new generation Christians here. Ah. Yeah. Hallelujah. That will be your song throughout the course of this second, of, second half of the year. For those who don't understand Yoruba, he said, my chains are broken. I have come to the house of joy, the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. I have come to the house of joy. If the Holy Ghost permits us, we'll sing it again. If not, I'd just like you to sing that song throughout the course of this month because there is no chains holding you down anymore. Amen. They are completely broken. Let's, let's, let's take, it says in Jeremiah chapter 30 and verse 19, and as that song was welling up, the Holy Ghost reminded me of that scripture. It said, out of them shall proceed thanksgiving. Out of them, out of divine glory, Christian church shall proceed thanksgiving. And the voice of them that make merry. He said, for I will multiply them and they shall not be few. I will glorify them, and they shall not be small. Ah, I said I will glorify them, and they shall not be small. How many of us are walking in our high places? Glory to God. What a weekend we had. Last weekend, what a glorious time it was in the presence of the Lord. And we thank God because none of us, not a member of Divine Glory Christian Church is walking on the plains of the earth anymore. We are walking upon our high places, our high places. I'd like for you to just believe that word as simple as it sounds this morning and walk in it. You know, God is not a drama, drama king or a drama queen. When he speaks, it's because he has already done it. He said, once have I spoken, twice I have heard that power belongs to God. When the mouth of the Lord spoke, the Bible says, Great was the company of those that published. Uh, God is always looking for publishers of his word. And I want your life to publish that word in this season. That indeed, when they look for you in the plane, you will never be found there anymore. When they are calling the register and they are trying to mark the register for those who have settled for the plains of this world, I say your name will not be mentioned anymore. Your, your place, your name, your fame. Is gone through the ends of the earth. Hallelujah. I want to read very quickly the word of the Lord as it is laid upon my spirit this morning. It's Thanksgiving service, and I want you to praise God throughout the course of this um, few minutes where we'll be sharing the word of God together. I want your heart to well up with Thanksgiving. Like Pastor said to us during the course of last week, one of the key elements of breakthrough or to walk in our high place is thanksgiving and we did that very deliberately last sunday and i believe that we have continued in that same spirit and we have come this morning with our testimonies with our baskets full of blessings and we are still here continuing in that light of thanksgiving i just want to read a scripture in the book of john chapter 10 i want you to read with me john chapter 10 from verse 27 it's a word of assurance this morning it's not just a word of encouragement it's a word of assurance is a word that will build confidence in the Lord and not in any flesh. And that's what is the Lord, what Jehovah is bringing to the church this morning. Can you turn your Bibles to John chapter 10? I'll read from verse 27 to 29. I think verse 29 is really my emphasis that the Holy Ghost has given to me. It says, my sheep, if you are there, say amen. amen. 
okay i think most of the most of us are there already he says my sheep god bless you multimedia hear my voice and i know them and they follow me verse 28 and i will give or and i give not i will give and i give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand <laughs> neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand he now took it further as though if it were possible to pluck a man out of the hands of jesus he seconded it to the father in verse 29 and he said my father which gave them me is greater than all is greater than all semicolon and says and no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hands that if it were possible for any reason we know it's impossible that it's that any man should be able to wrestle <laughs> you from the hands of jesus he said you know what i've seconded you to the father it's not just about me if you read verse 30 he said for i and my father we are one he said my father which gave it them me is greater than all and no man no man you can't dare him in the face and struggle to pluck them out of the father's hands and when i read the scripture i said holy ghost what are you trying to say to us this morning what are you trying to say to me and he asked me to pay attention to that word pluck to pluck is to take hold of something to remove something out of the out of its place forcefully and very quickly forcefully and very quickly forcefully and very quickly and jesus was trying to say that everything you know there was a time jesus was saying uh, I think it was is it John chapter 17 now when he was praying and then he was talking about the fact that father everyone that you have given me I have kept all the disciples in the world that you have given unto me Matthew Peter James all of them he said I have kept them all he says safe Judas the son of perdition you know of course he chose his path and the path of destruction was that which Judas chose and Jesus said it was impossible for anyone to pluck in fact remember that in in when jesus was praying for peter in luke chapter 22 i think from verse 30 to 31 specifically in verse 31 jesus looked at peter and said peter the devil wants to sift you like wheat peter he wants to take you he wants to pluck you out of my hand he has desired you to have you he said but i have prayed for you i have done something that will make it impossible for the enemy to pluck you out of my father's hands he said i have prayed for you so that your faith will not fail the reality of the matter is after every great event after i mean in the kingdom of god after every great thing that the lord does just like he has done with us in the past couple of days and is still doing i mean by raising us onto our high place one of the key things that the devil does to uh, believers is to entice us to come again to one of you know just like a child you know that is being enticed with the common things that children would love to have and then whereas there is something great something bigger that is being kept behind the hand and the child is only looking at that sweet of biscuits or chocolate or ice cream and so the devil will always come with something and trust me take it from me there is absolutely nothing in this world remember the devil took him up high into the mountain the bible says and he showed him all of the glories of the world the eye rises the beautiful he said just bow just bow to me and i will give you all these things forgetting the fact that god had spoken in isaiah chapter 66 is verse 2 now he said for all these things as my hand made and all these things be i'm sure jesus remembered that scripture yes the the word had been given to the to the devil but the bible says the creator of the world in itself is god but he was trying to entice him to take him out of his high place wanting him to come down from his high horse to play with him in the plains and that's what the enemy would always do after every great transition the truth is we have moved whether you like it or not whether you believe it or not there has been a transition in this house god has moved us from the bondage of egypt and we are in the promised land we are not on our way we are already there if you believe that say amen God has moved us already. God has transitioned your life, your home, your business. Everything that has to do with you has been moved. There has been a great movement, a shift in the realm of the spirit. And not just in the spiritual realm, even in the physical, in, your, in every part of your life. 
you would experience, you will begin to see this shift and the movement even from now on. But the devil won't come in. He would always want to knock. He would always want to come. The, the Bible says the prince of the world comes. He cometh. He is not just about one, a, a one-time thing and then he relaxes. The Bible says even after the temptation, he left Jesus only before his season. He would always come and check that old house. Just like that evil spirit the Bible talked about. He said he will come back and check if that house is vacant. He would always come to entice with the things that may look colorful, things that may look, you know, that will satisfy and gratify the flesh right now. Just like he did with Joseph. Joseph was on his way. A naked boy sold into slavery, but he had started a movement. Joseph was not the same. He had moved from the comfort zone, living under the roof of his father, and his life is somewhat, I mean, moving in the right direction. He had become the leader of all, you know, the servants in the house of Potiphar. And he could have just relaxed and said, this is the high place that God has called me onto. When the wife of Potiphar approached him and said, lie with me, he could have settled down there and said, and at best, he would have been the best of all the servants. Maybe he would have gotten the best of our world as the best servant in the land of Egypt or the leader of servants. But he said, no, I've not gotten there yet. And the enticement and the temptation could not, when he got into prison, the same thing. He was made the leader and the ruler of the prison houses. I'm sure that probably when they were appointing, you know, responsibility in prison, Joseph would have been the one appointing and probably not participating in so much of, you know, the, the things that had to be done because he was the leader of the inmates. And he could have settled for that and said, well, maybe this, this, this dream that I've always had, maybe this is the fulfillment of it but he knew that there was something bigger there was something greater greater mightier than the prison house than potiphar's house and until he got to the palace of pharaoh of egypt he didn't stop he didn't allow the little things to entice him the reality is no one is able to pluck you out of your father's hands but you can excuse yourself from the hands of the father a man can decide to move away from under the shadow of the almighty a man can decide to walk away just like Dina, the daughter of Jacob. There had been a commandment. You don't go into the strange people. You don't go into the Gentiles. You have no business with them. The Bible says she came out of her father's house. One of the days, maybe she was just bored and said, I'm, I don't know if somebody can be bored of the high place. He said, I'm bored, of, I'm bored here. I just want to look around. And the Bible says she went to see the daughters of the city. And it was a one-time mistake too many. Because as soon as she left the high place and came down to the plain, the Bible says she, she was caught and she was raped. And that was the beginning of, you know, a devastation. Simeon, you know, and all Levi, they became, you know, angry. They killed the people, all kinds of things. It was like, you know, things just began to happen one after the other, cascading from one terrible thing to another terrible thing until the raging curse of Jacob came upon them when he was to bless them in uh, uh, Genesis chapter 49. We started to curse Simeon and Levi because of their anger. But it didn't start from there. There was something that, you know, that happened before Simeon and Levi took upon themselves, you know, that, 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 that responsibility to destroy a whole city. Dina left a high place. And God is saying to you and I this morning, we have moved, we have transitioned. He has positioned us within the grasp of the Father. And there is, a, there is a hand that can carry you, that can bear you. It is a safe carriage even when the boat is rocking. Even when you, it'll just like in the middle of the storm, like Pastor Yamu was giving testimony the other day about the storms in the air. When the boat is rocking, you know, and you feel, am I going to be, am I, am I going to be safe here? Can I just, God is saying no. It might be rocky like the boat, like the ship of Paul in Acts chapter 27. Stay there. It is your eye place. Meaning that even at that high place, there may be things that may want to come to rock your boat. The devil wants to sift you like wait. He wants you to come down from your us, from your high us, from your high place. And God is saying, no, stay there. My hand is able to bear you. The Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 3 and verse 27, it says the eternal God is your refuge. Say to yourself, the eternal God is my refuge. He said, and underneath you are the everlasting arms. Hi. He said, the eternal God is your refuge. And underneath you are the everlasting arms. He shall thrust out the enemy. He will thrust them out before you. And the Bible says, he shall say, destroy them. But my emphasis is the fact that the everlasting arms of God, 
cannot fail. He cannot drop his own. <laughs> the everlasting arms of God are so strong, sufficient enough to bear several millions of them through the land of Egypt and out through the Red Sea, through the wilderness for 40 years. Just one hand of the Lord. The Bible says Israel was brought out of Egypt with a mighty and a strong arm. And that same hand led them from captivity all the way to their high place. God is saying to somebody this morning, I am more, more, more than enough. You don't need to add anything to the equation. My arm is sufficient to bear you even when it's looking like <laughs> the sentencing is about the corner. Things are shaking. You're about to lose something. God is saying, I will keep you. See, Paul said, I am persuaded. First Timothy chapter 1 and verse 12. <laughs> that he's able to keep that which is committed into his hands. <laughs> he's able to keep you. He's able to keep. See, you can, you know, we see in movies and then even those of us that work in, in the banks. There is a safe vault. There is a place where you can't just break it into. You know, there is a place where there are certain things you cannot, you are not, you are not granted access if you don't have the keys or the permission to go in there. But I tell you, the strongest of strongholds, the strongest of prison houses can still be broken into. Maybe if you have seen Money Iced, you know what I'm talking about. You know, the strongest of places, it is man that made it. <laughs> they said it's the white man that made pencil that made the razor. It's still very possible to penetrate into whatever the harms of man, the intellect of man, the capacity and capability of man has formed. It is still very vulnerable to another man. It only takes some time to unlock. But I tell you, no man can unravel my God. No man can find out. The Bible says his ways are past finding out. Do all of the researches. Go for all the theses. Write them all. You cannot find out my God. And I prophesy as I believe it in my heart this month that your blessing in the high place, men will look at it and it will be unexplainable. They, they will want to look for reasons. How? What happened? Is it the weather? Is it nature? Is it the boss? Is it your uncle? Oh, maybe they will look for all kinds of explanation and they will not be able to find it. See, trust me, if they are still able to find answers for the reason for which you are lifted, then Jehovah is not, that, the hand of Jehovah is not that hand that is bearing you yet. When that hand comes for you and is lifting you up and above all things, they will look for all the answers and they will not be able to find it. All of a sudden, Sarah, whose womb have been dead, 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 Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11, Abraham had lost all the powers. Sarah's womb was completely dead. So it was naturally impossible to explain how they could conceive. But all of a sudden, that, that woman, he said, who would have believed that Sarah would give one to suck at her old age? Who, who could have explained it? That is the hand of the Lord. That is the harm of the Lord. Pastor sang that somewhere we're closing service last week. Oh, Lua. That is that hand that is able to unlock doors that have been locked up for ages. And the keys have been thrown into the bottomless pit under waters of life that no man, no diver can get you know, a hold of those keys. But my God is saying let them lock it in the midst of the sea. I can find it out. <laughs> let it go deep down into hell. I can break the doors of hell and bring them out. And so I'm saying to you by the mercy of God that as we are walking in our high places through the course of this month to the end of the year. In fact, for the second half of the year, as I speak it again for one, for two, for as many will believe it in the name of Jesus that your lifting shall be unexplainable in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It says, underneath you are the everlasting arms. I don't know what is shaking in your life, what is drifting away, what you feel, I might lose this, I might lose these resources. In fact, I've lost the investment. Lord, I've lost this child. He's, not, he, he's uncontrollable. He just does what he like. Jehovah is saying to you, underneath your family are the everlasting arms. He can bear anything. He can keep anything. Is your safe carriage through the storms of life. The Bible says, and that same hand of the Lord was upon Elisha. Second Kings chapter three, verse thirteen. Bring me a minstrel. The hand of the Lord came upon Elisha. You read through so many scriptures. First King 18, 46. The hand of the Lord came upon Elijah. He outran the chariots. These are unexplainable things. How can a man outrun chariots? You can't explain the power. You can't explain the ability to, to power before six horses. The best of horses. The king was not using dull horses. 
the weak horses. No, they were the choicest of all. And I don't know the choicest, you know, in our days now, maybe they, they are no longer horses. They are talking about the best of cars, the Maseratis, you know. Uh, and a man is able to outrun. He might not be in the physical realm now, but even in the spiritual realm where intellect have become, they celebrate intellectuals and they ce celebrate things men are able to invent. God is saying over and beyond as long as it is generated by men and for men i can surpass men i can go before and go ahead of men i can do exceedingly abundantly more than what any man can ever think what than more than what any man could ever imagine so what god is saying to you beyond your imaginations beyond the pictures and the desires you have in your heart in this high place that I've called you onto, if you stay built to the horns of the altar and not be distracted by the little things and the ephemeral things that will pass away, I would do with you what I've never done with any man before. You know, when I read, ah, God bless you, mommy. When I read scriptures and you hear God say certain things, uh, uh, in Joel chapter 2, he said, blow the trumpet in Zion. And he was talking about the people. He said there had never been the like of them before. Meaning it has never happened before. He said, and there will never be the kinds of this one to the years of many generations. Uh, if you are still being compared with one and say, oh, it looks like this person. His achievement is like this. You are still not there yet. And I don't know who I'm prophesying to you to, to this morning. And to the family that I'm prophesying, that I'm speaking to this morning. The kind that has never been done. Moses was praying that prayer. And he said, Lord, if these people die the kind of death that ordinary men die. He said, it, it will be a common thing. He said, but let the earth open. God is is a special is a specialist in doing what has never been done before and i don't know what has not been recorded in history before your life will write that history <laughs> i don't know what has not happened before because God has placed you in your high place. <laughs> I don't know what has not been done in your lineage before. They trace it down to the generations of your fathers and your mothers. Maybe they are even great in their times and in their primes and say, ah, but they are rich. Oh, but they've got resources. They've got intellectuals. God is saying beyond their money and their intellect, I am going to do with your life <laughs> what I've never done with anyone within your lineage before. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Because underneath you, are the everlasting arms and this is no respecter of age it's not a respecter of your class or your level whether you are young or you are 60 and you're saying well my times i've left it to my children god is saying no daddy is not time to retire no mommy is not time to drop the button yet i am still walking in your life i am still walking with you i still want to do what you have not been able to do for the past 40 50 years of your life i can still do the bible says for even in their old age they will still flourish why because they are planted in the courts of our god they will be fat and they will be flourishing that is your story in the name of the lord jesus christ underneath you ah, i pray your faith will catch this thing that the lord is saying this morning hmm. underneath you god was talking about you know the great deliverance in the time of elisha again elisha the king of israel came to him on a sick bed and he was about to die pastor has ministered this several times unto us and the bible says elisha said open the window of your house and carry your bow and your harrow the bible says and he asked him to pull the harrow and elisha placed his hands upon his hand the hand of elisha upon the hand of the king was the hand of god uh, upon that business upon that shop that you have opened that it looks like there has been no patronage uh, from this day i hear it in my spirit the hand of the lord will come upon that that thing that little business that hand came upon uh, five loaves of bread and two fishes it was insignificant amongst five thousand men not numbering women and children they said how, how can this feed a whole multitude jesus jesus said don't worry he lifted up his hands onto the heavens and blessed it and broke it the hand of god came upon the little i say your little one will become a thousand my and they call baraka teaser the hand of god came upon that little that little that little and it fed five thousand to the end that they had 12 extra baskets even after they had been fully fed i uh, as i prophesied to somebody this morning in the name of Jesus, I, I didn't i didn't i didn't plan to pray i didn't plan to prophesy that which has looked insufficient and there will be abundance coming out of it that which you have said koto koto is not always sufficient 
is always by the just just it's just barely enough god is saying i am more than enough and for you in this month of june that which is barely enough to sustain you by the power of the living god even in the midst of the scarcity and scarceness elisha said bring me bring my portion first for the barrel of meat will not fail the woman said this is the last i want to eat and my and my son and we're about to die elijah elijah said bring it to me it will not fail every other person wasted away but that woman hey even in the midst of scarcity let them say the pump price of fuel is a thousand i speak to you when they say there is a casting down by the harm of jehovah even in this great month of june to the end of the year this year of divine settlement i decree the barely enough will become more than enough in your basket in the name of jesus it is the harm of the lord it is the harm of the lord elisha plays that harm you know and they say in yoruba only on motor ship and baba that's the reality when your hands are open wide the heavenly father wants to always see you surrender that's the key that's the key he always wants to see you surrender <laughs> that's the key don't say lord i'm able to do this one on my own if it's my health take care of it but for my job i need you to deal with this boss uh, lord if it's my finance i'm good with my finance but for this child i need your hand upon it god is saying no i am not looking for partial surrender i am looking for total absolute surrender in every way in every sphere of life john 3 30 he said that i may decrease that he may increase god is saying don't take a hold of some things of some areas of your life to yourself and think to yourself you are able to do it you are able to keep it you are able to sustain it god is saying i am hey david spoke the other day he said the lord is the portion of my inheritance he is my cup he maintains my lot i don't know how many people in this month of june will be able to boldly say like david said that god is the maintainer of my lot my going out my coming in my health my job my career my home my son my daughter everything i am and everything i will be he is the maintainer of my lot no wonder i said now the lines are falling unto me even in pleasure places behold i have a goodly heritage it is the one that has taken jehovah and has allowed jehovah to be his maintainer the one who carries and bears him even like that 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 akomo the one that can bear and can carry is that one that will walk out on monday and see lines just falling together is that one that will walk out on tuesday and see all things working together for his good is the one that will walk out on wednesday and says i've been young now i'm old I've never seen the righteous forsaken, neither I see beg bread. Therefore, I cannot beg, I will not borrow. Is the one that will come out on Thursday and say, The Lord is my refuge. Many may be falling and a thousand on the right hand, but Jehovah is with me. Is the one that will come on Friday, Saturday, and return on Sunday as the ransom of the Lord with everlasting song upon his head. He would have obtained joy and gladness. They look for sorrow, they look for sighing in his habitation, and they cannot find them in his habitation. Is that one? who has called Jehovah his maintainer handed everything over to God in total surrender and I don't know that place wherein you are still struggling to give it up to God God is saying hand it over it is only a light thing oh yeah it's too small that which is, that looks like a strong burden Jesus is saying this morning just come unto me my burden is light if you read Ezekiel the book of Ezekiel is filled, filtered, everywhere scattered with the hand of the Lord. You say the hand of the Lord was upon me and he carried me into the valley of the dry bone. The hand of the Lord was upon me and he led me. That, that hand carries elites. It can do anything. The hand of the Lord. This was not what I intended to teach this morning. But the Holy Ghost changed it completely and he said to me, tell my people this. It is total surrender. Be persuaded like Paul. Because no one can pluck you out of his hands. And the Holy Ghost reminded me of many troubles that I've been through. And took it away from me. And I said, Lord, if it has not been you, at point A and point B. And he also reminded me of the story of my dad. You know, he used to tell us the story while we were growing up several times. And when I remember these stories now, I mean, my father in the flesh, I, 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 would, I would always give praise to God because he's still alive till today. At least two of them that I remember very, very clearly. One of the days he was driving 
on the way to Ibadan. Back then, way back then, with his Volkswagen. <laughs> I grew up to know that blue Volkswagen. And he said, at some point during the course of the journey, a tree fell from nowhere. He said, before that incident happened, it was by the side of the road on the right hand side of the carriageway. He was singing in the hollow of his hands. In the hollow of his hands, I am safe. Whatever may be for me. In the hollow of his hands. Uh, it's only oldies that will know that song. <laughs> he said he was singing that song and a tree fell on his car as he was driving. It fell completely and people came from all places because the car was completely, I mean, it was a write-off. Like literally split into two. And they were looking everywhere. He said he did not know where he was. And he just found himself at some distance away. He was sitting on the cool and calm North, he said he did not know what moved him out of that car and sat him by the side of the road. And everyone said, where is the man inside? Where is the man inside? He said, when he stood up and said I was the one in the accident, everybody was looking at it. It's not possible. How did you come out of the vehicle that was a complete write-off? It is the hand of the Lord. See, these are not things that we see in scriptures that God can move a man. <laughs> these are realities that have happened to men in the flesh. Moved him out of that. that the, the lion's mouth was open to consume him. And he told us <laughs> back then, some of my siblings were not even yet born. And many times we joke with it in the house. If daddy had died, he would not have even been part of us. But God took him out of that mess. I don't know what Pete, the enemy think he has signed, sealed, delivered, closed up the prison house. It cannot be done. The Bible says the angel of the Lord came in the night and opened the prison house. And the disciples walked out of the prison house. And all of a sudden, the people that were jailed overnight were seen in the temple preaching. How? The hand of the Lord opened the prison house. By the power of the living God. Wherever the enemy thinks he has knocked you into a corner. And rescued you into a corner. You can't come out anymore. That hand will come for your rescue this morning in the name of Jesus. Ah, David said he pulled me out of many troubled waters. You read the story of Paul. Many times, many attempts on his life stoned him at Lystra in Acts chapter 14. The Bible says he was stoned to death. In fact, he was left for dead. And everybody thought that Paul had died. The Bible says the disciples gathered around him and Paul stood up upon his feet. How many times? Even when men, pastor preached this, you know, uh, uh, to us a while back, 2 Corinthians chapter 11. The Bible says there was a time when some guys gathered around and they bowed, the Jews, they bound themselves with an oath. And they said they would not eat, they would not drink, they would not do a thing until Paul was dead. They bound themselves. And I don't care who is binding himself to an oath. I don't care the confederacy of men who has come together and said, this man will not rise. They bound themselves with an oath and said, Paul this time will die. And the demons of that season took over that oath and put it in the heart of Aretas, the, the emperor of Damascus at that time. The Bible says he guarded the whole city of Damascus overnight. Nobody could come in. Nobody could go out. I love the, 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 the teaching of, of Pastor on this a while back. He said, but God made a hole in the wall. <laughs> overnight, when the enemy thought he had shot, he had shot Paul in and there is no escape overnight, the the Bible says God made a hole in the world. If God would need to make a hole in the world to rescue you, if God would need to defy nature to rescue you, if God would need to go beyond nature to rescue you, to confirm to the world that He's the one that has lifted you, I decree in the name of Jesus. It is happening for you right now in the name of Jesus. 2 Corinthians 11, the Bible says God <laughs> rescued Paul when men failed to kill nature rose against him in Acts 27 he said this guy has to die and the storms of life rose against Paul and every, the Bible, even Paul himself said all hope to be saved was lost like this was the this was I'm dying now he said but after much abstinence after surrendering the matter to God after saying Baba I underneath you you are my survivor you are my only hope God is waiting for some of us to come to him and mention those words
Uh, some of us have it in our heart, but God is saying He wants you to come and say it like it. That's why we sang that song, My Daddy. I say, My daddy, your baby is singing. Your baby is saying he cannot do anything. Even Jesus said, I can of my own self do nothing. God is waiting for total surrender in every area of your life. And say, Baba, you are my all. You are my beginning. You are my end. You are my sustainer. I can do nothing. I can only worship. That's the only thing I can do to you or do for you. I commit it all to you. That's what Paul did. I, he said he has committed all into the hands of God. And they believed that no man was going to be able to take him from the hands of God. And of course, no, no man, no man, that hand can be strong for you and that hand can be strong upon the enemy as I close this morning. The Bible says in Daniel chapter 5 and verse 25, the days of the kings were numbered. He said, and the hand rose, um, wrote on the wall, mene, mene, tekel, God has measured you upon the scale. You have been found wanting. That hand decreed judgment. In, in second, I mean, first Samuel chapter 5 and verse 7, the Bible says the hand of the Lord was heavy upon the Hasdodite. <laughs> I love that scripture. The hand of the Lord was heavy because they are taking the Ark of the Covenant and they put it in the house of their God, Hasdod. The Bible says the hand of the Lord was so heavy and the Lord struck them and and afflicted them with tumor. I don't know that enemy that has risen against you who has bound himself with an oath by the power of the risen Lord. Even as the harm of the Lord is sustaining you, the harm of the Lord will be heavy upon your enemy. Uh, I love the emphasis of heaviness. He was terrible upon them. He was mighty upon them. He pressed them so much so that he struck them with tumor. <laughs> Strange tumor started growing out of their body. Before they knew it, they said, you know what? Come and release the hack of the covenant. That's what has brought this plague upon our city every boss every authority that has sat that has stayed upon your your promotion your next level your glory your lifting everyone in whose hand the lord has placed your blessing but has refused i say in this service this morning the hand of the lord is heavy upon them the hand of the lord is heavy upon them because you must walk in your high place can you celebrate god even as you bow your heart this morning with your voice of thanksgiving and just bless him because you know his harm will not fail you the everlasting hands will not drop you they will bear you they will carry you i want you to celebrate god this morning because you know you are convinced you know it those hands will not fail father we give you all glory can we just bless the name of the lord for the robust message you have sent unto us this morning every word of god pumps your faith every word of god stirs your faith every word of god Ladies and gentlemen, provokes your faith. Somebody give him more praise because something has happened to your faith. Your faith being high is capacity to receive being high. Give him all the praise for what we were this morning. Magnify his holy name. Thank him. 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 Give him thanks. He deserves it all. Give him thanks. Worship his holy name. Oh, Jesus. It's all about Jesus. Celebrate him in the house. Oh, Jesus. You are the sweetest name of all. Oh, Jesus. You hear me? Always when I call, oh Jesus, you lift me up each time I fall, oh Jesus, you are the best of all. Give him all the praise, it's all about Jesus. Celebrate him that died and rose and give us the breakthrough. Father, we want to say thank you. We bless your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name have we given thanks. <laughs> I think somebody's email will be louder. <laughs> the blessed nation of God, I think your email should be most receiving. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Come on, tell somebody it's all about Jesus. <laughs> I am glad to bless the name of the Lord for the spiritual message we had this morning. Wonderful. Let's appreciate God for the word. Let's appreciate God for the word. God bless you, Pastor Toby, for that word. It's a word that came from the 
very hoven of the Most High God. You know, at a vigil, let me tell you what happened. Okay, in the moment I, at a vigil while I was preaching, when we go to Isaiah chapter 48, verse 21, the Lord expressly spoke to me. He said this month will be our month of breakthrough. Amen. Now, listen. Isaiah 48, verse 21, please project. The Bible says, and when he led them, they thirsted, they thirsted not. It caused water to flow for them. He cleaved the rocks and water gushed out for them. I laid much emphasis on that particular area. He cleaved the rock and water. I said you'll be having gushing effect. If you remember the VG. Now, you see, God gave me the word. He said, pronounce it that this month will be a month of breakthrough. So we ended the VG because I minister extempore at times. You know, if you don't do things down, you forget. So I was thinking on Sunday I would pronounce. I didn't pronounce it. So the moment I came in here this morning, as I stood here, the word of the Lord came unto me. He said, I told you that this month is going to be a month of breakthroughs. Now let me tell you this. When Pastor Tommy was sharing, Idemija, hallelujah, that's breakthrough. I break through. Whatever has been limiting, you finally come of it. And you are released into your new level. Amen. Now let me tell you, I had a week most exciting there are prayers I've been praying. There are things I've been believing God for. For years in my life. Just praying and praying and praying. Ladies and gentlemen, they are in different sectors of life. I saw God answering those prayers this last week. In different aspects of life. In different aspects of life. At least I'd seen some aspect, and I know that the one who has started with those aspects will complete all other aspects. Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? I saw the power of God breaking me through in different aspects. There's an aspect that has to do with my future. Lord, you've been showing me this. I want a breakthrough in that area. And the power of God broke me through in that area. Even in a way that I can look at my Life when I'm in the 80s, when I'm in the 90s, and I can be smiling because of certain breakthroughs God gave. I, I, as in ladies and gentlemen, different aspect. I began to see his hand. And I'm like, God, these are things I'd been praying on 10 years, 15 years. See how, I know one thing, they were just following one after the other, like that, this last week. Ladies and gentlemen, you see, there's nothing as easy like when the hand of God is at work to work. What makes the difference is not your hard work. It's the hand of God at work. And when that hand is at work, ladies and gentlemen, it changes the tide of things for you. So, ladies and gentlemen, the message we have this morning about the hand of God, I want everybody to please hold on to it very strongly. Because you are in the month where you will see the hand of God so mighty. It will be so heavy over your lives. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Ladies and gentlemen, we had so many testimonies this last week. I was sharing some on Wednesday. After Wednesday, oh my goodness. If I shared the ones that happened between Wednesday and Saturday, which was yesterday. Ladies and gentlemen, because of time, we'll be so amazed. Testimonies, miracles upon miracles. Miracles upon miracles. Miracles upon miracles. Ladies and gentlemen, you are set for an encounter. <laughs> I'm talking to somebody here. I said you are set for an encounter. And the encounter this time around is going to engulf even the whole world. <laughs> Your world will change by the breakthrough power of God. The chains are broken. <laughs> I said the chains are broken. I said the chains are broken. I said the chains are broken. As I'm speaking, angels are confirming it. The chains are broken. In your life, the chains are broken. You know, one of the things I like when God speaks to us like this, when people receive, is always very great. The Lord says something to me, you see, I'm just going to share it right now, and then we go into other things. Um, the issue with many is that when God's word comes like this, we don't mix it with faith. So therefore, we don't get the result that we're supposed to get. And the word of God is no respect our presence. If a little child can mix that word with faith, then you get the result. Ladies and gentlemen, the word of God that has come on the road, that this month is going to be significant for breakthroughs in your life. Mix it with faith. Allah spoke unto me. He said, that was before I came here. <laughs> he 
He said, my people are not mixing it with faith. Therefore, they are not maximizing that thing to the best of what it's supposed to deliver. And ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> you will see demonstration of faith today. I'm speaking, I'm under the influence of the spirit of special faith. I know when that spirit is on me. <laughs> you will see demonstrations of faith today. Uh, uh, okay, don't worry. <laughs> see how they are saying it. Don't worry. When it happens, you will see. <laughs> are you catching what I'm talking about? You see, in Hebrews chapter number 4 and verse number 12, as in verse 2, right? Can you check that scripture for me? It should be verse 2 or verse 3. The Bible says, and the same gospel, the same which was preached unto us, the same was preached unto them. But it did not profit them, in that it did not mix with faith in their heart. Which verse is that? <laughs> Projection department. Okay, let's clap for them. <laughs> I think we need, if please, if you have special skills in projection, please help the department. Okay, please, we need that department helped. We need everything snappy when we are speaking scriptures, please. God bless you, the hands that are working. Please, let's improve on our skills. Glory be to God. Hebrews chapter 4, verse number 2, the Bible says, and the same gospel, the same word. The gospel simply means the word of God. It means the good news of God. The same word of God, which was preached unto us, the same was preached unto them. But it did not profit them. Can you see it? Because it didn't mix with faith in their heart. So for the word of God to come is not sufficient. There must be a response in my life. It should elucidate a response. And my response mixing with the word provokes the right answer in my hands. Several times, ladies and gentlemen, great things have been spoken of us. The Bible says great things have been spoken of you, O oh, great city of God. I mean, the word of God has come around us several days. Prophecies of our lives. Ladies and gentlemen, what do we do with this prophecy? I was sharing a testimony on Wednesday. A mother came to me on Wednesday. She said, I looked at her and I said, your son, I, I see that God moved her from the back seat to the, to the front seat. And I saw that the boy just suddenly got on the lane of supernatural acceleration. And things started moving very fast for the boy. And the mother went into prayers. And then she invited me to join her in prayers. So some night we will pray. And the word of God came. And then suddenly the opportunity opened up for this boy. A guy that just graduated about, was it last year or two years ago? He got a job, one, the basic salary, 115,000 pounds. Basic salary. I mean, that, that is without allowance, without traveling allowance, without this, without that. Just basic. And that's over 100 million era to get that kind of salary. And that is a company that is worldwide. So it will be moving from one nation to the other. Please understand, ladies, I'm not talking dollars, I mean pounds. That is supernatural what? People, when they get jobs in, in England, you know now, salaries in England is about 1,200, 1,400 pounds, 1,500 pounds. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? So uh, the whole salary may be 30,000 pounds per annum. Now, to move somebody who just finished to that level, ladies and gentlemen, that is speed. Now, please understand, thank God that blessed is she that believes, for there shall be a performance of those things. The woman took the word and then started working with it. She was telling me how she was working with the word. Please understand, there must be something inside of you that mixes with the world for the word to come through. <laughs> A lot told me that the word is coming through. He said, but the maximization of it to the best will be when we ourselves rise in faith to mix our faith with the word that is spoken unto us. Now in Acts chapter number 27, the Bible said, but Paul the apostle was in the shipwreck. Acts 27 and verse number 20, the Bible said, and when they did not see the sun, no stars for several days and night. And all hope to be saved was lost. That means this was a completely desperate situation. A completely hopeless situation. They had entered into total despair. There is no way out. They had given up. They have signed up that <laughs> at this particular time, <laughs> uh, they are so sure they're going to die. In the midst of the ocean, no way out. I know in those days, no telephone to call for rescue, nothing. Do you understand what I'm talking about? And the Bible says, and... The, there was no hope again that they be saved. Now, after love's long abstinence, Paul came out. He said, The angel of the Lord, verses 21 22. The angel of the Lord stood by me this night. <laughs> the angel of the Lord stood by me this night. <laughs> the angel of the Lord stood by me this night. The angel of the Lord stood by me this night and said unto me, Fear not, Paul, for the Lord has given unto thee the lives of all that saved with thee. He said, Nothing shall happen to, 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 to your life save just the sheep and the lady and all that. 
And Paul spoke unto them. And see what Paul said. He said, and I believe God. Ah, this is the part that hit me. And I believe God that it will be unto me as it has been told me by the Lord. Now, please understand. A messenger came. The word angel means messenger. It means angelos, Malachi, which means messenger. A messenger came, whether as a pastor or as an angel of God, uh, spiritual, and deliver the message of the Lord unto you. Now, what do you do with the message? But Paul said, I believe I mix it with my personal feet. I believe that it will be unto me. <laughs> so, that word will never profit him if it is not mixed with it. I believe that it will be unto me as it has been told me from the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, there is the place of the mixing of your personal faith with the word that is, that is spoken. And what is that faith God is talking about? Let's, let me just say simply as the Lord spoke unto me. He said, he took me to Psalm 91. And he shared something with me. But before I get there, let me just tell you the faith he's talking about. The faith he's talking about is just your saying it. Speaking those things. How many of us from that Sunday woke up or from that VG woke up to be speaking those prophecies on our lives? Ladies and gentlemen, those things are real. If I share some testimonies with you, every word God speaks, they are real. On uh, Sunday, I gave a word. I said, God said, tomorrow we break, you know, open for somebody with laughter. I said, uh, the day we break with laughter for someone. Uh, and then people just, some people said, amen. I said, ha, see how you said that. I said, yeah, go around and shake some people, tell them, tomorrow we break open for me with laughter. I just said the word and I left. And me, I slept. And I woke up. I didn't talk to anybody. God is my witness. And then I woke up. The Holy Ghost just directed me to my phone. I was just waking up. I was still in bed, still lying down. I took my phone and I opened. Lo and behold, a text message came in. And somebody has sent me quite some huge millions. And me, I needed the millions to do something. So I just passed the money into what I needed to do. Ah, I was just like, say, what made this person send me this money? Ah, ah. Do you understand what I'm talking about? And then the Holy Ghost said, but you remember, in fact, when I first saw it, laughed at law, you are too humorous, and you know I needed this money for this. <laughs> do you understand what I'm talking about? And then God said, maybe you remember the prophecy yesterday, that tomorrow we break open for someone with laughter. That that day we break open. I was just like God. Please understand. Every prophecy he gave that, that, um, that Sunday, I saw everything happen in my life this last week. I can share a couple of um, testimonies here. Maybe I will share some when I finish. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, everything I saw then come to pass one by one. And then in the lives of people as well. So I was sharing some people's testimony on, on Wednesday and some on Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Now, please understand, ladies and gentlemen, when God speaks to us this way, God is ready to confirm his word. He does not lie. That word carries the capacity for self-implementation. For my word shall not come unto me void, but must accomplish that which pleases me. I must prosper in that to which it is sent. Isaiah chapter 55 and verses 10 and 11. Glory be to God in the highest. I said glory be to God in the highest. I said glory be to God in the highest. <laughs> So what is the faith I need to do to mix with the world so that that word can come through in my life? The faith is not just mental ascent. Mental ascent is just, I just believe and it's just in my heart. Believing of the heart that is just in your heart. Thank God for that. You understand what I'm talking about? But you see, please understand, ladies and gentlemen, you need to understand that you need to pass, you need to satisfy the examiner before you can be said to, to have passed. I was taking an exam in Harvard and the lecturer that will mark my script was by my side. And he saw what I was writing, that I was going the other way. Eh? And the lecturer was correcting me stylishly that this is, I said, no. And I was arguing with the lecturer. And then somebody said, are you stupid? He said, this is the person that will mark your script. And we are telling, the lecturer was wrong. I was correcting the lecturer. Do you understand what I'm talking about? The chief lecturer later said, he said, my goodness, I never saw a student as knowledgeable as you for the way you corrected that thing. Do you understand what I'm talking about? But you know one thing, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, for the sake of the exam, and to my mama, Kerry, <laughs> I don't know if you understand what I'm talking about. So, I, it will be stupid not to swerve that direction, even though the direction is wrong. Please understand, ladies and gentlemen, it is Jesus that marks our script. And then, he has told us, this is what me, I understand as faith. What Jesus understands as faith is what we should understand as faith. I, I don't know if you understand what I'm talking about. Oh, come on, am I talking to somebody here? You know what a child understands as love? is not money you spend for the child. A baby or six months? No, it's his attention. If you play with, if you ask him that they stay with the child, morning to evening, and then you want to carry the child and play with the child, I said, no, I don't know you. 
He said, ah, it's me that, it's because I go to work by 5 a.m. and I come by 10 p.m. But it's me that buy your diapers, even your, your food, your papa, even the house help, help you, that you are clinging to. It's not me, they pay out. The child will say, I don't what? No, you. Depart from me. <laughs> you work at <laughs> your <Job> upset. <laughs> I know you. You will see the child clinging to the house help, and then the thing will pay you. <laughs> you know what the child is saying? You don't have time for me. So what does Jesus understand as sweet? Mark eleven twenty three. 23. If that would they say, somebody please just look at it. Mark eleven twenty three. 23. He said, verse 22, have the God kind of faith. So what's the God kind of faith? Verse 23, he defined it. Very, very, I say unto you, if that would they say to this mountain. Now let's be counting the number of say there. If that would they say to this mountain. How many say is there? So anytime you hear me say, see, just be counting. If that would they say to this mountain, be ye therefore removed and cast into the sea, and thou wouldest not doubt in your heart, but must believe. That's the first belief. Am I right? But must believe that whatsoever you say shall come to pass. Thou shall have what you say. How many, how many sayings now? No, it's four. Verily, verily, I say unto you. <laughs> if thou wouldest say to this mother, be therefore removed and cast this, and thou believest that whatever you say shall come to pass, thou shall have what you say. That's for you will see that what Jesus is saying is let your saying be more than your believing. One belief, four say. That is saying is faith. Thou shall have what. So what you have in life is not even what you believe. What you have in life is what you say. So the law of faith is the law of saying. Am I talking to somebody here? The Bible says in Romans chapter number 10, starting from verse number 6, the word of God is near thee, even in your heart and in your mouth, that if thou wouldest, even the word of faith which we preach, am I right? That if thou wouldest say in your mouth, I must believe, am I right? He said, thou shalt be saved. For with the mouth, confession is made unto, I mean, un un unto righteousness, and with the heart, Man believes unto righteousness. Please understand. So the, the part of saying is the cardinal part, ladies and gentlemen, of your faith. Now, how do you mix your faith with prophecies and with every word? We have been told right now that chains are broken. We've been told right now that the hand of God is on my life. Ladies and gentlemen, you, keep, you can need to keep repeating it all through the week. You need to keep saying it all through the week. That's in the name of Jesus, my day breaks open with joy. That I will laugh like never before. You just keep saying it, that this week is, in fact, I prophesy, and I'm speaking by the Spirit, that this week will be your week of laughter. Amen. It will not just be Monday. Every day this week, Tuesday, will be a day of laughter. Amen. Wednesday will be a day of laughter. Amen. Thursday, you will laugh. Amen. Friday, you will laugh. Amen. Saturday, somebody's going to laugh. Amen. If that is you, come and shout the biggest amen. amen. Are you getting what God is talking about? So we are talking about understanding that we need to mix it with faith. Now, let's see, Psalm 91, that was where God spoke with me, I mean, to me from. He said, he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadows of the Almighty. Yes, we know we are in Christ. Yes, in him we live, we move, and have been. Everybody believes that. And he shall say of the Lord. If you don't say, the devil will extract him out of that place. So your saying is what mixes your faith, ladies and gentlemen, with the word of God over your life. The word of God spoken to you is not sufficient. You need to mix it with your faith. But Paul had to tell them. He said, I believe it will be unto me. So his own saying, ladies and gentlemen, as he said it, he experienced it. Ladies and gentlemen, please understand that if a man does not say, you may not experience the way you should. Even if you experience, that is by angelic, just, angelic operations just breaking through for you. But you know what? You may not maximize it for your own benefit. So you need the mixture. You need to say. You need to involve your mouth. You need to speak. And ladies and gentlemen, we are going to speak today. Great words have been spoken to us. Great, you know, ladies and gentlemen, I woke up. <laughs> I, began to, I began to pace the floor all over my room. I mean, I don't know whether for hours. Lifting up holy hands, thanking God for the words. Speaking over my life. Ladies and gentlemen, and everything started dropping. And everything. God said, this is one thing my people need to know. And I was doing it day after day. And all those things I saw. 
Ladies and gentlemen, this is one thing my people need to know. If they can do it, they will get the same result. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to mix the words that we hear with faith in our heart. Now let me let you know this. The key word that we have heard today is that God has lifted. I told them on Wednesday, I said, how many people, you know, praying that uh, the price of wealth will come down in Nigeria? <laughs> we were looking. I said, don't deceive yourself. It will not come down. It's not a cost. It is you that will go up. <laughs> it's not coming down. It is you that will go up. When there was famine in the land, that was the time Isaac prospered. That was the time God jacked him up. Please understand that we're on the high mountains now. Just as Pastor Toby preached this morning. Just as we were told last Sunday. And we're told at the VG. Ladies and gentlemen, he has lifted us right now to the high places of the heart. I mean, when you are lifted to the high place of the everything is underneath you. 500, it's somebody that is handing 100 million per, per annum. Even 100 million per week, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, 500 naira will never be an issue to him. I don't know if you understand what I'm talking about. God is taking you to the place where 500 naira will be messed up in your life. Am I talking to somebody here? Even when they say they are selling a thousand error, do you think that will shake down God? Please understand, ladies and gentlemen, and you are higher than him in the things of the spirit. Aya, Heliboza. <laughs> Come on, tell somebody I'm going to profess on my life right now. Now listen, ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says the Lord has spoken. Who can but prophesy? Check that scripture for me. Amos chapter number 3, I think, verse 8, right? Verses 7 and 8. The Bible says the lion has roared. Who will not fear? The Lord has spoken. Who can but prophesy? After God has spoken, God wants somebody to prophesy, to repeat it. God wants it to be a repetitive machine. In Ezekiel chapter number 37 and verse number 5, the Bible says, And I prophesied as I was commanded. Can these dry bones live? Uh, you know, Lord, God said, okay, prophesy. Tell the dry bones, come together. Do this, do that. He said, and I, pro I repeated it as he said. So God wants you to be a repetitive machine of those prophecies which has been spoken unto you. And I believe, <laughs> yeah, Paul said, the angel told me this. And I believe this will, I mix my faith with it. <laughs> Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? So you need to keep speaking that same word on your whole life. The Lord has spoken. Who can but prophesy it? How many people want to prophesy what God has said over their life? You're going to take it right now <laughs> and repeat it, ladies and gentlemen, verbatim on your life. <laughs> you will say this word applies to me, mutatis, mutandi, as they say it in law, eh? on all fours. <laughs> Please understand, this word is my own. <laughs> this word is my week of supernatural breakthrough. Ladies and gentlemen, you will break even into a result you never worked for in your life. I woke up one of the morning. Somebody just called me. I was talking with somebody. And the person just gave me an opportunity. He said, Pastor Femi, and there's this information. I, I said, Lord, what do I do? The Holy Ghost said, work on that information. I quickly, the, I was just asking the person something else. And the person just told me, she just, he just said it by the wayside. Immediately, I grabbed that information. Pa, bo, I worked on it. Ladies and gentlemen, within 24 hours of working on it, <laughs> my mega profit showed up. I said, God, the Holy Spirit said, this is how I break my people evil. It's just that a lot of people don't know. The other side of the he said, if you follow my spirit, I will make you rich. I will bless you. Ladies and gentlemen, God has a lot in mind to do in your life. This week, you will be walking into strange information. <laughs> Even the people that carry the information may not work on it. You will work on it and God will give you total breakthrough. Yeah. And you know one thing? The thing was waiting for me to work on The moment I worked on it, eh? The thing just turned to my prophet. Ladies and gentlemen, that means God was waiting. He said, I'm just, the angel was like, we are waiting for you. Just move. <laughs> and the moment I moved, everything turned. May I profess out somebody here? In the, this week, as we are stepping out, of, hey, the Lord said, there is someone here. <laughs> hey, hey. He said, by the close of today, not tomorrow, by the close of today, you will turn around. And you will say, I never knew you could answer me this way. I never knew you could answer me this way. I never knew you could answer me this way. Ah, answer me this way. Thank you, Jesus. Hold on. We are going to sing that song as we begin to prophesy right now. What are we going? Where are we about to prophesy? Let me just quickly say this, please. Please just permit me. I want you to understand that when your rights don't come to you as a Christian, discouragement, ladies and gentlemen, is at the doorstep. The Bible made us to understand that let the portion of the priest or the meat of the priest be given unto them. Let the portions of the priest be given unto them, lest they be discouraged. Don't let me deceive you. 
where even priests, if you don't give them their portion, then they will be discouraged. We have learned about divine leading as one of the things that take us to the high mountains of the earth. Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. That is the reason why I will not want. He makes me land and green pastors. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. Can you see good things following my life? Now, at the end of it, see what it says. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will abide in the present. Please, you won't abide. Even in your duty post, you can't abide if goodness and mercy doesn't follow or don't follow. It is a, don't, don't pretend. It is a practical impossibility for anybody to stay consistent, even with God. Ladies and gentlemen, when goodness and mercy are not following the life of that person, just take that from me. So you need this prophecy. Don't frown your face. This is a reality. If these things don't follow somebody, somebody's Christianity will be in question. You can't abide. The Bible said in Nehemiah, priest project, Nehemiah chapter 13 verse 10. The Bible says because the portion of the priests were not given unto them, they fled from their duty post to defeat, to go and found. Priests are supposed to be in the temple. Because the portion of the meat was not delivered unto them, Nehemiah 13 verse number 10. They, now, please understand, the Bible didn't say they went to the farm. The Bible said they fled. <laughs> I'm not preaching Quran. See it now. Is it not there? The Bible didn't say they departed. Ms. Yamu. The Bible said what? In line with, in line with legal interpretation. Is, is it not different? They fled. That means they departed quickly under <laughs> under section what? <laughs> is somebody can job talking about? That means the life of that person, ladies and gentlemen, you can't stay. You can't concentrate. You can't focus. If your rights are not being delivered. In Proverbs chapter 30 verse number 8. Proverbs 30 verse number 8. He said two things are hacks of the deny me not of any. Don't let me be too rich that I may, I may not be proud against you. He said, and don't let me be poor that I may not steal. Your Christianity will be in question. You can't abide if goodness and mercy are not following you. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? Let me show you something about Jesus. Isaiah chapter number 7. Please project immediately, please. God bless you, projection department. Isaiah chapter 7, verse number 14 and verse 15. The Bible said, on, on a virgin, This sign shall be given unto you, a virgin shall conceive. Can you see it? A virgin shall what? Shall conceive. And shall bear forth a son. And his name shall be called what? Now, who is he talking about? Who is he talking about? If everybody agree with me, come and tell me, who is he talking about? Now, the next line. The Bible says that butter and honey shall he eat. Eh? And that he may be able to refuse evil eh? and choose the good. Please understand, his sense of judgment will, will be hotter if butter and honey don't follow him, regardless of the father is the son of God. Butter and honey shall he eat. Eh? Don't argue this thing, no. Our Lord will make sure we certain women minister, follow Jesus. Luke chapter 8, verse 1. And minister to him of his of their substance. Jesus was eating well. The Bible said one of them, they were the cooks of Herod. Can you imagine? I want to say from Herod. They are the one cooking for Jesus. So when the Bible said, butter and honey shall he eat, God said, I will satisfy him. So that he will not have any reason to steal. He will not have any reason. He will concentrate. His, do you understand? His sense of judgment. Even if you, a judge you don't pay, Nigerian justices now, they can't even send their children abroad to school, except they collect something. God, yeah, <clears throat> in 2008 or so, I think they made the last salary adjustment for judges. They put them about 500,000 or so. Now, since that time, they have not adjusted that salary. Till now, they put it in consolidated funds. Till now, 500,000, less than it, not less than $1,000 a judge. And you are meant to sit and adjudicate on the case of 50 billion era. And they say you should not be corrupt. No. He needs butter and honey so that he will refuse evil and choose good. If you don't satisfy the person, the person will naturally be... Because the daughter is calling, Mommy, please, they said they will send me out of the house. If I don't pay my house right now, I'm in Oxford University. And then Mommy is like, Lord, <laughs> salary cannot even pay the house rent. You do my And the lawyer is saying, you know, my Lord, I want to in chamber privately. <laughs> <laughs> is that what the country I'm talking about? But butter and honey shall eat. And certain women followed him and ministered to him of their substance. He hated it good. That's the reason why Jesus' sense of judgment was passed. God satisfied him. When you are satisfied, ladies and gentlemen, it is easy to walk in righteousness. 
It is easy to walk in holiness. That's what God is saying. Now, don't argue this. This is about your life. In, in Matthew chapter 11, you know, I was almost quoting Matthew. I said, in first Matthew. <laughs> in Matthew chapter 11, I think verse 18 and 19, Jesus said, John the Baptist came. No eating and no drinking. They say he has a demon. He said, but the son of man talking about himself, he came. Eating and drinking. They said, this one is a gluten and a wine Bible. Jesu Jeu. Ah, Jesu Jeu. The Bible said, but I want to correct everywhere. To the point where even the entire society said, ah, Baba in Jeu. Ah, he's correcting. That's, that helped his sense of judgment. Don't argue this thing. The Bible said, First Peter chapter 2, verse 21, he left us a perfect example to follow. That's the example me I want to follow. I don't care. <laughs> Rest your feet. <laughs> You are going to prophesy goodness and mercy to follow you. <laughs> I never knew you could answer me this way. Hey, I never knew you could answer me this way. Hey, I never knew you could answer me this way. Answer me this way. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I never knew you could answer me this way. I never knew. Say, I never knew you could answer me this way. I never knew you could answer me this way. Jesus, I never knew you could answer me this way. I never knew you could answer me this way. I never knew you could answer me this way. Thank you, Jesus. Now, as the choir keeps singing that song, I want you to begin to prophesy over your life. I never knew you could answer me this way. I never knew you could answer me this way. I never knew you could answer me this way. That in the name of Jesus, goodness and mercy follow me. I occupy the highest point. In the name of Jesus, my life is on top. By the power of God, in the name of Jesus, provisions follow me. By the power of God, the good hand of God is on my head. Our Lord on Nekeba Sakata, rest quality on my life. Prophesy, mix it with faith in your heart. Mix that word with faith in your heart. I say, say it, that is your faith. I never knew you could answer me this way. Prophesy on my life. This month is my month of breakthrough. I break even on every side. He claimed the rock open in the name of Jesus. And it caused gushing effect for me. As the results are gushing out for me this month. By the power of God, results are gushing out. Somebody prophesy. I say prophesy. I say prophesy. The Lord has spoken. Who can but prophesy? Somebody pro, 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 prophesy. Hey, Raga, I prophesy on my life. Araka Heka, my ways are over. Goodness and mercy follow me. Pot and honey do I eat. In the name of Jesus, I say I hear the best of life. By the power of God, certain women follow me. And they minister to me, even of their softness. Good results follow me in life. I say good results follow me in life. Goodness and mercy are following me. But Bobby Timba, could you say goodness and mercy are following me? By the power of God, I say it's my year of divine settlement. I break even into settlement. Somebody prophesy. I'm hearing there's a sister here. You are breaking even into settlement now. 
by the power of God, you are breaking evil. You are breaking evil. You are breaking evil now. I break through the settlement. I break through the settlement. I break through the usual result by the power I break through the usual result by the power of the Spirit. I break through, I break through. I break it up. He cleaved the rock. <laughs> and the washer goes out for me. In the name of Jesus. Unusual result this week. This month in my life. In the name of Jesus. Testimonies and miracles. Testimonies and miracles. Me pale radosto. Me pale radosto. Remata zakata. Remata gazato yagabaya. Oh, bargo texele doste zakata. Me ma podi bozata. Me to pareke tekzeketa. Me la to zekuta. Me la to zakata. Ora to zakata. Lord, I break even. I break even. I break even. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, I we pray. You are going to hold somebody. This last week, this last week, some days ago, we had two days ago, three days ago. I went to open a house for one of our sons. It was our convention last year. When, uh, what's the name of the man of God that came to preach on Sunday? Pastor Daniel. When he came to see me. When he came, when he came and then we were in the office. And then some of our members wanted to see him in my office. And I, where I was, Pastor Daniel was seated with his wife. I said, they, and you know one thing, most of the people that were coming in, as they were coming, even the other musician that came, I will be telling Pastor Daniel what the person is about to say. I said, this musician wants to travel out. I said, so, so. and then when he came, I said, so, uh, <clears throat> what do you want God to do for you, sir? And then he said he wants to travel out. And all that. So as that my son and his wife wanted to come in, I said, I see the two of them arguing about relocating, that they needed to go to another, move from where they are living to another place. I said, I see the wife saying he wants island. <laughs> and then they came in. I said, the two of you, you are talking about getting a new house. The two of them and said, Pastor, new reception. My wife was fighting me that this is where she wants, and this and this and that. Pastor, then he was just looking. I said, then you have the house, bring your hand. Ladies and gentlemen, the man carried the grace. And the hand of God has been. He said they were just walking in, the, in, in one. He said, you know, it's good to, not to run from service. This guy decided to walk in church for for, for for the program. And he dedicated his heart, his money, everything into it. So they said, in order not to be late for service, they went to go and rent an hotel in Adeni Jones. And it was at night, midnight. He was now walking around. Except this thing is mixed with faith. Nobody receives anything. The man was walking around. And he was walking and he was prophesying. And then, and then suddenly, he had the word that they would get the, the house there. And uh, I mean, somebody said there is a house empty here. And then they were in a brand new house. And my son went to price. And then they said, okay, come and pay. And my son did not even have the money. Can you imagine? To not make the matters, whatever. Anyway, to cut the long story short, he told the landlord, I'm buying it for this price. Landlord said, next day he went to see the landlord. The landlord said, I will not shake you. He said, last day, I don't know how I agreed to the price with you. He said, you definitely use charm for me. He said, I will not shake you. Because, because you have brought another chance to take it. <laughs> Maybe you just say you want to take the house free. Akbara Olorone. I say Akbara Olorone. When that good hand is on you. <laughs> now listen, ladies and gentlemen. To cut long story short, anyway, the house is bought. We went to dedicate the house and all of that. God said, I wore that cloth showing house at the crossover service that there will be divine settlement this year. I must let you know God is doing it too. <laughs> <laughs> there is a testimony I'm here to share and I still keep quiet when I share it I'm very sure that everybody will roll you on the floor but uh, 
it's just between me and Pastor say we are keeping quiet. Is that what Pastor ever it is? So. <laughs> I said God is doing miracles for people. <laughs> if you believe that, say amen. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, you are going to hold somebody. You're going to mix that word with it. Say, I prophesy over your life that this year the Lord divinely said to you, you pack into your own houses. Begin to prophesy. I prophesy break even into your house. Mela <laughs> Leke boza, babra leke dogza, babra leke doya. I prophesy, I prophesy, I prophesy that this year you step into your own divine settlement by the power of the Spirit. You break even. Nama poya, me paragado zebra leke dogsta, me gaboya. I prophesy, I prophesy, I prophesy. Me ratok zeke toya, regadok zeke broni gadogsta. Oh, my goddess, Mirana Goda, Babra Ligedos, Meraka. I am moving to my houses. I am moving to my houses. I enter into settlement. Now shift it into other fields of settlement. I prophesy marriage on your life. You will settle maritally. I prophesy new jobs into your hands. You will settle job wise. Professionally, you are settled. I said the Lord takes you to the height of your profession, to the zenith of your career by the power of the Spirit. Hey, prophesy. I said, prophesy. Prophesy. I said, prophesy. In the name of Jesus, say it. Jesus said, and now we confirm it. For I'm the Lord that confirms the word of my servant and performs the counsel of my messengers. Can you say it? Jesus said that we confirm it. Can you prophesy it? Jesus said I will bring it to pass. Marado Sita Hoxi. Hey, for those that excel in strength in this service. Erekoya, they hearken to the voice of his word. They hearken to the voice of his word. Can you say, can you mix it with faith in your heart? Can you mix that word with your faith? Can you mix it and your faith is your saying? I say your faith is your saying. Your faith is your saying. Can you say it? Can you prophesy? This year, Mara Hoxi. Mambre Legedoxa. Membalarado, Bibrali Garade, Bargedo Zele Telebo Zina Hunters, Mik Zekatoya, Awa Loru Yekebo Sakata Toshisha Yano, Awa Loru Toshisha Yano, Maria Ketaya, let that good hand rest on me, let that good hand rest on me, let that good hand rest on me. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Oh, Relia, Pargeto Selidasti. Let the living waters <laughs> flow over my soul. Everybody stretch your hands forward like this. Let the Holy Spirit come and take control of every situation. All my cares and bodies on to you. Let the living waters, let the living waters flow over my soul. Told him stretch your hands that day, and I lay hands on him. And Akbar Atong Peririja de Ninoiri brought her that house immediately, instantly. That same night, instantly. Next day, instantly. Akbar Atong Peririja. As I lay hands on you spiritually now, stretch your hands forward. 
The Lord said, I should tell you, we begin to generate result out of no resort area. You will begin to see resourcefulness coming out of nothingness in the mighty name of Jesus. You begin to see productivity coming out of futility in the mighty name of Jesus. I lay hands on you by the power of him that called me to service. Make, Bazata, Eliaga, Baripo, Paradi. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Those hands right now lay it on your head. Le rodo zepra le garada zopra di garoksta. Le kebo zeketo ya gaba zopra di garoksta. Le rikotak zeketo ya gaba zopra li garato zakata ya gaba. Le yaka baragatokse le mataya. E prodia bust out. Yemobra bust out speaking in tongues. Maparagada with the hands on your head. Mekaba zele tok zakaba ya gaba. Mambra di kebro di garade zakata ya gaba. Le kebo she kebo frokidia. Ongwe mi fo ye kebo zakata ya gaba. Ongwe mi sare o. Oh, Gloria, Hey, somebody, you are connecting with a flight. 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 By the, the Lord says, somebody is going to get a salary boom this month. He said, somebody is a kebo sato yagaba shakata yagaba. chapter 2 and verse number 8. The Spirit of God is ministering to me right now. He said, go to Nehemiah chapter 2 verse 8. Please read what is there for me. Nehemiah chapter 2 and verse number 8. Nehemiah chapter 2 and verse number 8. Leo paradexa lekeria owo olu ambe loria ye emi o lia gada desi nana antaria gaba. Nehemiah chapter 2 verse number 8. Everybody read please. Somebody on mic. One, two, go. A letter unto Asaph the keeper of the king's forest that he may give me timber to make beams for the gates of the palace which appertain to the house and for the wall of the city and for the house that I shall enter into and the king granted me according to the good hand of my God upon me something has happened to you right now wherever you find yourself unusual results will be coming out Money or wow, Lua, I'm bad. Loria, baby, for
contrary economic climate and condition you begin to experience it now why because the hand of God that makes the difference the hand of God that grants speed is not going to come upon you it has already come he's already upon you can we just lift up your hands and just give him praise acknowledge that good hand of God upon you is the one that causes to run through a troop and a hotel be the key safinata the sami says many be days that rise up against me but in the name of the lord i would defeat them that hand has come upon you this morning can you give him praise can you give him glory can you thank him can you thank him never never act like an ordinary man again don't see yourself under any circumstance the hand of god has put you over and above Give him glory, give him praise this morning. Act as such because you have become another man. You are not the one that came into this service. That hand is upon you. And as we do that, can we thank God for the hand of God upon our pastors, our father in the house, Pastor Femi Fadei, and our resident pastor, Pastor Tommy. Can we appreciate and collect the hand of God upon them? Can you just thank God for the hand that is upon them? We have experienced the dimension of that hand this morning, and we give you praise. We acknowledge that hand, your hand that is upon their life, that is lifting them also beyond every limitation, that is taking them to the higher realms that God has destined and proposed for them. We give you praise. We give you thanks. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' mighty and unfailing name, I be prayed. Hallelujah, I can please have your seat in God's glorious presence. Well, I'm going to do that song again. Someone that knows the bridge very well, that's the height of the song. He's the person that should lead it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's a Thanksgiving Sunday and it's time to just give God praise. We're in the sixth month of the year. And we have every reason to be grateful to God. So please, this morning, package your offerings, your tithe. You should have at least two envelopes with you. Or if you're not using envelopes, you should be given at least two offerings. Your Thanksgiving offering. Today is the first Sunday of the month. And also, your appearance offering. What you have brought to honor the Lord with this morning. So please, package your offerings, your tithe, your first food, and your Thanksgiving offering. We're doing a transfer. You can do it to the account of the ministry. It's been projected. You can go to the back and use your POS machines as well. You can do a direct transfer to the account of the ministry being projected. You can write your checks. Make them payable to Divine Glory Christian Church as written on the envelopes. If you're watching us from outside and you can't use the account being projected because of some limitations, you can please reach out to us. We'll get across to you with an account you can send your offerings to that is denominated in dollars. Whether an account or you want to use Zelle, you'll be able to get that across. Several, several people have done that and um, the monies have been remitted to the appropriate account. So if you want to give your tithe this morning, if what you are giving includes your tithe, your first fruit or a special seed in your hand, maybe you are you're giving a seed that you are using to thank God for something that you believe God has lifted you over and above in this season. So you can please rise to your feet with your tithe, your first fruit, and your special seed. As our Father will bless the offerings. 
And afterward, he also blessed the offering and the thanksgiving offering. But first, please rest your feet with your tithe, your first fruit, and the special seed. Everybody with your tithe, with your first fruit. The Lord said, I should tell you, there will be speed for you. Amen. Lift those things up. Father, <coughs> we bless the tithes and first fruit and covenant seed. That this week will be a week of speed for everyone. Everybody rise to your feet. My Father, my God, as that word has come, <laughs> let it be a total package for everyone. Amen. I said let it be a total package for everyone. Amen. That this month is your month of speed. Amen. That this month supernatural acceleration is your portion. Amen. That which you give the Lord accept. Amen. And your gratitude in the name of Jesus gives you a new attitude today. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. John chapter 4, verse 39, please. John chapter 4, verse 39. I need a loud reader. John 4, 39. Glory be to God on the highest. Is somebody reading out? Hallelujah. So we all read. John 4, 39. One, two, and go. And many of the Samaritans of that city believed on him for the sayings of the woman which testified. He told me all that I ever did. You see, the Bible is talking about the woman Jesus met at the well of Jacob. The woman Jesus told thou had five husbands. And the one you are with is not even your husband. Again, if somebody catch on what I'm talking about, the Bible says many of the Samaritans believed in Jesus because of the testimony of the woman. When it is time to share testimonies, come out. There are so many of us that God has done so many great things for, but we kept quiet. Come out and share. You see, it will ignite somebody's feet. Am I talking to somebody here? So it's not just about you. It's about others. Come and tell somebody, it's about others. Somebody will be able also to connect with your what? With your faith. That is very important. The Lord told me as I was sitting there, He said, there's someone in this auditorium that is holding him tight. Listen. God said you are holding him tight. I don't know whether the tight of January, February. I don't know what business breakthrough God gave you. God said, go ahead. He said, pay. He said, for what I am bringing is bigger than the little tithe you don't want to pay. <laughs> Does that make somebody laugh? <laughs> you know, when that word came, the Lord spoke to me. Can I, can, I, can I share somebody's testimony here? Please, allow me to share your testimony. This testimony, I think, happened this last week. The person, in January, February, I saw her. She's a member of this ministry. She's here. I said, the Lord said, you owe him tight. I, I see you paying it in foreign currency because I see God giving you a foreign currency breakthrough. Uh, then the woman, you know what, what she did? She just kept quiet. Anytime she came to me, we don't talk about it. She may have delivered message. Me too, I kept quiet. <laughs> so <laughs> she didn't talk about it. I didn't talk about it. We left it. So at the end of the day, in May, after service here, people were seeing me. I said, the Spirit of the Lord said you're holding him tight. He said, go and page in Korean because there is a foreign currency breakthrough in front of you. And then two weeks ago, she came to the office and she paid her tight in dollars. I lay hands on her under the power of the Spirit and commanded that the breakthrough should happen. To cut the long story short anyway, last week, this person got the call and they gave her a job. And uh, <laughs> they firstly offered that $13,000 per month, increasable to $15,000. And by the time they had their dollar allowance and all that, everything, I think about $18,000 a month, every month. 18, in this present economy, 18000 As when she called me on phone, she, she, she could not believe it. I said, that this miracle could have happened since January. Eh? But because you delayed it, that's why. $18,000 a month in this economy. And her salary, as at now, or as at, as at the last salary she collected, probably was about 500000 naira a month. That is, that is not a lift. That's a quantum. That's an exponent. God bless you. That's an exponential lift. Do you understand what I'm talking about? I say, this is what I see in front of you. <laughs> a lot said there's someone here that holds him tight. 
So now I met why I <laughs> Oh, Pastor, let us go. I let you go. It did be ja. Ah, no, 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 no. That's not how to sing it. You are singing it wrongly. You will say pow. <laughs> you will say what? The middle of that, that my bondage break. <laughs> eh? The fear of pain type break. Pow. Say it me jao. Hallelujah. Emi dele ayo. Ide mi ja. Hallelujah. Mode. Money de mi jao. Hallelujah. Emi dele ayo. Ide mi ja. Hold on, hold on. For some of you that wants to believe, this month there will be establishment. Make sure you are in the prayer meeting June 12th. This month there will be settlement. First Peter 5 10 says, And the God of all grace, who has called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered the while, me, I've, I've completed that while. I don't know whether somebody is about to start his own, me, I've completed it. After I, I had suffered a while, the one I've suffered is enough. The Bible says it will make me perfect. It will establish me. It will strengthen me and not decorate me with settlement. Am I talking to somebody here? So January 12th, it will be happening here life. As, you know, let me tell you, I was praying in my house. I was, at the, I was almost at the highest level in the things. So you see, when I get to a high level in the things of the spirit, I will be walking and literally I can't feel the ground anymore. Do you understand? So many times I've told you now that I, I, I'll be lifted into the hair. Do you understand? I, and I was, at that time, my hands are burning. That word just came, it's my time. That's why I told Pastor, I said, add it to it. No matter the title you give it, make sure it's my time is factored into that equation. <laughs> Establishment and settlement is my time. If you believe it's your time, tell your neighbor, I will be here June 12th. Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? Now listen, ladies and gentlemen. When God says this, is what we will do in a month, He will do it. There's one of our members here, Sister Pe Brota. She was calling me on Friday. I mean on Wednesday. Now I told her, I said, I see you getting a new job. It is double what they will pay you. I mean, I see you uh, promoted, and I see that it is double what they will pay you, and I see that the thing will take effect in June. Everything came to pass on Wednesday, which was the last day of uh, May. They called her a place of work. They sent her a mail. Uh, we promote you. Salary, double. According to God's word. He said, taking the effect from 1st of June. According to God. So when God said this June now, he said, your chain break. He said, a breakthrough man. He said, a settlement. On top of that, with establishment. Because it is your time. May I go sing? Money demi jao. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. We believe you have been blessed by this message. For more information, prayers, and counseling, you can reach us on the following numbers 080 33 706 938 and 080 28 28 1839. Or visit our website at www.dgccinternational.org and connect with us on our social media platforms, facebook.com forward slash DGCCINTL, Instagram at DGCCINTL, on YouTube, search Divine Glory Christian Church. Our Twitter handle is at DGCCINTL. Stay blessed.